Throw away time. What's your secret that could literally ruin your life if it came out? Two and a half years ago I was in dire financial straits. So I sold my home to keep my struggling business afloat. I neglected to tell the owners that they have an 800 square. FT. Bunker on the property that I built about 7 years ago. The bunker that I've called home since I sold it. The entrance to it is well hidden. But I still come and go very early very late in the day. I'm a single man who keeps to himself. I'm now in a situation where I could move somewhere else. But I love this hidden paradise so much. I speak two languages so every time I receive the new essay I will browse the topic in my own language and translate the text word by word to English then submitted it. No one ever caught me for plagiarism before. Half of Europe does this. I cut off all contact with everyone I know and move to Kenya. I tell people a fake name and a fake background and have made it appear to my family that I died on boat trip in the Pacific. No I am not joking. I am dead in the United States. Tupac. I once helped out my female friend's family by taking care of their cat for a week. Every day for a week. I would go over there and snoop around their house. I found my friend's diary. And proceeded to read the entire thing. I used this information to get her to like me. And she is currently my wife. I just wanted to tell everyone that you can be damn sure that this thread ain't dead. This is Reddit's F King confessional box. I don't want to be with my girlfriend anymore. But she might have cancer and I feel like I need to stay in the relationship. Edit. I have seen 50 stroke 50. Edit. Hey so I thought I replied to this a few weeks ago. Today's date is 11 stroke 4. But I can't seem to find where I replied. She's healthy and I split up with her before we found out. Yay for life working out. You're a better man than Newt Gingrich. I faked the last two years of college education. My parents put so much pressure on me I couldn't handle it. I was suffering from severe depression and anxiety, so I faked it all. Lied to everyone. Made up fake transcripts. I just got my foot in the door in my desired field thanks to a friend as they hired me as a subordinate. This place only hires college grads but no one double checked my credentials since I was recommended. My hopes is that if I need to find another job I'll have been at this place long enough to get it by experience alone. I work for a very prestigious company. I'm not bad at my job. I'm actually quite good. But my fear is eventually I'll hit a wall and the lie will come to light. No one has known this for the better part of a decade. It's a relief to finally say it out loud. I can't even tell those I love. My silence is my prison. If you get caught and go to a community college, you'll find a hilarious study group. When I was 17 I had an argument with my father and told him to FCK off. Later that evening he hung himself. Our argument was the last time he spoke to anyone in our family and for that I feel a terrible amount of guilt for. Instead of him saying goodbye and I love you to my mom and brothers he got told to FCK off before he went and killed himself. My punishment is to live the rest of my days in shame and guilt. He never left a note either. Everyone thinks I have a good job and roommates but I've been homeless and a prostitute for over a year. When I was 15 my parents were going through a divorce. My mom worked night shifts and my dad was living with a friend of his. One night my sister who was 19 at the time came home pretty drunk from a party. She was acting goofy and fell on the couch next to me. She started grabbing my leg and laughing and we started fondling. We ended up having sx right there. When we woke up the next day she had no recollection of the night before so I just kept my mouth shut. Fast forward to when I'm 18. Sister is home from college and dad is over for a visit. They get into an argument and in a fit of rage my dad announces how he has never forgiven her for the abortion she got when she was 19 and subsequently killing his grandchild. He's very religious. I then realize the baby she aborted was in fact mine. And as far as I know, I am the only one who knows since she has never mentioned that night. I once took a shti in the bathtub and then realizing what a horrible mistake I'd made. I flung Paul into a hole in the wall. 
My parents renovated and patched up the hole. So now there is a 15 year old turd in between the bathroom and kitchen wall of my childhood home. Not even using a throwaway because I have no shame. Yesterday I thought I had problems. Today my life is grand. My daughter turns 5 next week. If anyone knew the truth behind her parentage. I could probably lose her forever. I grew up in foster care. Never knew my parents or siblings. In my senior year. I met an older guy and we dated for almost a year. Getting pregnant about 7 months in. One night while we were watching TV. The subject somehow came around to our real parents. He had been adopted as a young child. Turns out the man I was seeing. The father of my daughter. Is my half brother. We have the same mother. Our relationship didn't last. And he is not in her life. For his own choices. My daughter is extremely smart. Beautiful. And well rounded. She'll never know the truth. Her father and I made a pact to never tell her. I just hope she never needs a kidney or something. Edit. Keep reading about people who knowingly slept with relatives they grew up with. Is it bad that I feel slightly less horrible? You wouldn't lose your daughter. This was an accident. Not something you did. No. You shouldn't feel horrible at all. Not your fault. I've never stayed on a thread this long. No matter how late to the party you are. Your story will have readers. This thread has given me a new perspective on the depths of human suffering. I accidentally killed 7 people. I put a rag into a new water heater exhaust to keep debris out and installed it in a rental. I get a call a week later. There's been an accident. I show up and there's a ton of M's and police. They ask me where the gas shut off is. And I go down to shut the gas off and see the end of the rag I forgot sticking out of the top of the heater. Rip the rag out. Shut the gas off and head upstairs only to be told all the tenants were dead. I drink all day now and sleep. It's killing me from the inside every single day. But if I say anything my family is ruined. We have a bunch of rental properties and we'd be shut down. This post is the equivalent of 1 million IMAs. I hate all of my friends. Literally. I don't have anything in common with any of them. And don't care. But I'm too scared to be alone and have no one else to go to so I keep hanging around with them. So many confessions starting with this will get buried no one's gonna read this. So I just thought I'd say that I'm one of those who finally got done reading all, at least 35. 000, zero, zero comments. Took me weeks. This is the first post I read on reddit. Very addicting read. Hugs to all who need it. I hope you find the strength to overcome your problems. My own secret. Is that I'm still deeply in love with my, now married with kids, first love. Nothing will ever happen and it is ridiculously hurtful. But we. Life goes on. I have memories of my sister, 5 years older, and I playing a roleplay game when I was younger that I think would be considered s or abuse molestation if I told anyone. I don't remember how old we were. But I know she was around the age where her breasts were developing. When home alone we would play a roleplay game where she was a boss and I was a secretary. And the boss would always s sorely harass the secretary. It ended in my sucking on my sister's breasts while she would lie on the couch with her shirt off. My memory has always been really horrible. So I only remember patches of this. But I remember that it never felt s all. I don't actually trust my memory enough to feel confident that this really happened. I love my sister. She's my best friend and I would never want to damage our relationship by ever bringing this up and asking her what really happened. It is a secret I will carry with me and never reveal. Also. Till it's hard coming up with a throwaway name. Edit. To clarify. I'm a woman. Just in case anyone assumed otherwise. The story I tell is that my first kiss was 9 years ago. When I was 14. With my now fiancé. False. When I was 13. I babysat an 8 year old boy. His parents were very open. And he was very yes aware. I caught him watching PRN a couple of times. 
from the start. He was very aggressive. Always grabbing me and trying to kiss me. After a while. Oddly impressed with this new sort of attention. And very curious about kissing. One night we started making out. This became routine. And went on for probably almost a year. Before I realized how horrific and wrong my actions were. I continued to babysit him for a while. But soon his parents stopped calling me. I've always wondered why. I'm terrified that I'll one day be exposed as a child molester. TL. Doctor is a 13 year old girl. I frequently made out with an 8 year old. I can't believe an 8 year got more action than I ever did. I know this thread is most likely dead now. But I used to emsturb it a lot. And when I was 10 I had a technique where I'd let off a load into a sock then wash it and quickly dry it. Now I couldn't leave it hanging outside or use a dryer otherwise my family would have seen it and probably smell it or whatnot. So I'd put it inside my gas heater unit. Unfortunately my sock had caught on fire inside the unit. Blew it up and set my house on fire. Only my brother was home at the time. And he managed to survive the house did not. For 5 years we stayed from caravan park to caravan park whilst we waited for confirmation that it was not arson and we could receive an insurance payout. We eventually did and scraped together money to start rebuilding the house. The house is still being rebuilt to this day and it shames me anytime I have to visit my parents living in a tiny mobile home where my backyard once was. I have been pretending to be colorblind to everyone I have ever known. Including my own parents since I was in third grade. I am now 28 years old. I even convinced an optometrist of it. Before your death. Are you going to make your last words? Fooled you? When I was 13 I caught my father in bed with my 15 year old brother's girlfriend. Also 15. I haven't seen her since. But I've been blackmailing my father with it for the last 6 years. You looked at a lake. My grade 6 teacher let me touch her boobs once. After graduating from high school. I went to a small out of state college where no one from high school knew me. I was told many times how impressive my false Australian accent was. So I decided it would be great fun to go through college pretending to be from Australia. All of my friends and even my girlfriend of 2 years think I'm Australian. I have a completely fake Australian identity. Family. And past. I will soon be graduating. And I plan on asking the girl to marry me. Everything she knows about me is Australian I don't know how to tell her she doesn't really know me. Guess I'm forever a bloke. Hate to break it to you. But you won't be marrying that girl unless it turns out she's actually from Australia and has been pretending to be American for two years. My husband beats me every day. He also forces himself on me often. I think about suicide daily. I feel as though my life would be ruined if people knew. Not ruined in a way that a lot of these other stories would ruin someone. But it would ruin me enough. You need to talk to someone. Call Safa Home for Women at 1-800-794-7672. They can direct you to resources in your area. There are places to stay. People who will come get you. People who will help you stand on your own two feet again. Call them as soon as you safely can. My great uncle Jack used to live with my family. One day. He got drunk and had a bad fall that ended up causing him to bleed out. I ended up finding him. I was 14 at the time. And had never seen such an awful sight. And lost consciousness due to all the blood. When I eventually recovered. I called the ambulance and stayed with my uncle. He died in the back of the ambulance. Holding my hand. No one knows about what happened to me. And if they did they would realize that I'm the reason he's dead. I have seen people faint like that many times. We were not out for long. Probably less than a minute. It probably would not have made a difference if you hadn't fainted honestly. If he died holding your hand he doesn't blame you. And you shouldn't blame yourself. No matter how old you were at the time. Accidents happen. Clearly not your fault. None of that is your fault. When you saw all that blood. You went into shock and fainted. You are not responsible for that. 
I've never attempted to kill myself. And I doubt I ever will. But I just want to die. I'm an incredibly happy guy odd enough. I truthfully am happy. But whenever I think about getting shot. Or getting cancer. I get a little excited. I wish I was one of those deaths on the news. Shoot I'd love to take someone's place. They want to be here more than me. I'll never actually kill myself even if it's just for the sake of others who need me. But I can't stop wishing that someone else would kill me. I'm done being here. I'm done dealing with the crap. I'm just burnt out and I don't want to be here anymore. Reddit shows me that many people carry heavy psychological burdens with them every day and still function. Sad sad world. My son attempted suicide and now he's pissed at me because I'm making him see a shrink. This post makes me think I'm doing the right thing. So thanks. If Sispa passes. Most of you guys are fked. I was up head twice. Once when I was 12 then again when I was 20. Never told anyone. Pretty much scared me off most men and after getting tired of friends constantly joking around about me still being a virgin. I just lied. I'm the kind of person who deals with problems on her own. Every night when I go to bed. I have a little pillow and assortment of blankets that I pretend is this girl I like. She would never like me in real life, in fact. She doesn't. So I just play pretend. It's inherently creepy but it's what keeps me from being a total wreck all the time. I have this body pillow. And sometimes I pretend he's it's a man. I will fall asleep holding him it tight to my body. Sometimes at night I play out scenes with my imaginary man. Really detailed. Intricate storylines with dialogue and everything. When I do this I don't feel so lonely. Does getting a feeling of intimacy from a body pillow make me crazy? I lose sleep every night because I feel like I was a shtty brother. My younger sibling is 5 years younger than me and I always felt like I was a crappy role model and terrible example to him. I treated him like shti and I really hindered his childhood. Now he's one of my best friends but we both know it happened and I can never forgive myself. Yo I see people confession worse shti like near suicide and cum boxes. That was really fked up. Fking reddit, but it doesn't mean it doesn't affect me. I love my brother and I would take a bullet for him. But not a day goes by where I wish I could go back in time and change how I treated him. I don't believe in regrets. But this will always be looming over my shoulders. Thanks for reading. Reddit. I've never read so many comments on Reddit in my life. I'm a 25 year old female high school teacher. I've gotten myself off on multiple occasions while fantasizing about fking one of my 16 year old male students on top of the desk in my classroom. My mom died when I was 17 and when it comes up I use it to garner attention for myself. In reality. I never met her and she has never meant anything to me other than a name. First time telling anyone this. This thread is so deep that probably no one will see. But if one person does see it, it'll feel better. I'm basically living a lie. I told my entire family I was able to transfer out of community college and into a university. But I never finished up the requirements. So since I live at home, every day instead of going to school I go to the local library and BS. My lies are so extensive. I even go to the campus and meet my girlfriend for lunch sometimes. I've made fake transcripts to show my family. And to make it look like I'm actually studying I go to MIT Open Coursera to look up facts that I learned in class that day. I have become a remarkable liar. I hope to be transferring in the fall and then I look forward to living a normal life. Coming clean is not an option at this point. Hey bud. I've been there and it gets better. I swear. PM me if you need to talk. After my mother left my father. He developed a really inappropriate attachment to me. I was 19 and my brother moved in with his girlfriend. Dad was suicidal. And had no family or friends close by. So I was it. For the first year. He would wake me up at 2am to sit with him every night until he cried himself to sleep. After 4 years of cleaning up after him. Making sure he ate. 
and generally remained alive. I discovered that he had been using the attic access in his closet to sit above my personal bathroom and watch me through a peephole. I wanted to dismiss it as paranoia. But there were too many physical signs that made it reality. Moved out shortly after that because I couldn't bear to look at him. I'm 29 now. And no one in my family has any idea that this ever happened. I know that he was going through a rough patch. But I feel violated and dirty every time I think about it still. I also have huge amounts of guilt because I hate him for putting me through it.